the Lord has given me a word for the body here and I'm just going to give it forth okay and if it pertains to you praise the Lord I pray that it does because it pertains to us and it says in uh, Malachi chapter 3 I'll just read verse 1, 2, and 3 here. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness hallelujah hallelujah and the Lord gave me this this word just a little while ago and what the Lord is saying to us is that he has a company of people in the earth today many multitudes of people and we are the elite okay the elite and it, it what it means is is that humility is the chief concern remaining humble before the Lord and before the brethren okay Jesus walked the earth in complete and total humility dependent upon the Father for everything okay Jesus didn't walk in the earth like people today are walking in the Christian faith all puffed up with pride and arrogance and haughtiness okay he walked in humility he spoke the truth with all perseverance with all love and with all mercy and when he spoke a word that word came to pass and many words that Jesus spoke when he walked the earth are coming to pass today and today he dwells within us the believer okay within us the believers he dwells in us and he's speaking words forth in this earth today and those words are coming to pass those words will be accomplished in the earth because they are his words and as Samuel who was one of the first great prophets after Moses Samuel the prophet that God rose up his words did not fall to the ground they were accomplished what God spoke forth through Samuel what God spoke forth through Elijah and through Isaiah Isaiah's words are not falling to the ground the words God had him speak but they are coming to pass the words that God had Jeremiah speak are coming to pass but the elite of the Lord today it says in Revelation chapter 1 that we are made kings and priests unto our God the priests are the Levites and he's purifying the sons of Levi today as gold and silver is purified and he's trying us as he did the Apostles Peter haughty prideful I will I will never forsake you Lord I will die with you Lord See but Jesus prophesied to Peter he spoke a word to Peter that he speaks to us also or has spoken to us I should say because all of us at one time or another in our Christian walk have denied the Lord for the most part I should say not all of us because some people might not have praise God if you haven't hallelujah but I know what the Word of God says that all the Apostles forsook him and fled isn't that a denial isn't that a denial of the Lord that they all scattered but he said it would be so he prophesied that see 
This is talking about prophecy. God's going to be having us speak forth words. The word of the Lord comes forth out of the mouth of his messengers today. It can always be backed up with the word of God, with the scripture. If you can't back it up with the scripture, then, then it ain't from the Lord. It ain't. Okay? You'll be able to back it up in principle and in method. Sometimes in method, sometimes not. But in principle, you will be able to back it up. Because the Lord is not, He does not change. He's the Lord our God. He changes not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. But he told Peter, he said, Before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Okay? Before the cock crows tonight, you're going to deny me three times, Peter. And Peter said, No, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. But he did. He even did it with cursing and swearing. But it was the purging. It was the gold and silver. Peter was being refined. And so when Jesus, on the third time when Peter denied him, Jesus looked at Peter. He just looked at him. With his face all bloody. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. He wept for three long days, weeping, weeping and crying. He was being purged of his pride. Being purged. Okay. Now God has his people today in various trials. Whether it's just uh, totally spiritual, or whether it's financial, or whether it's uh, with jobs, or whatever, with people, whatever kind of trial God has us in, we have to stand. And we stand by the grace of God. We stand because the Lord is with us, standing in us. He's not left us, nor forsaken us. He's always with His people. But He's going to have us speak forth the truth of the Word of God. This truth right here. This truth of the Word of God. Speaking it forth. See, the fact that God said certain things are going to happen. Jesus said, He said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Oh, how I would have gathered you as a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you would not. He said, Your house is left unto you desolate. See, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. See, they're going to look on him whom they have pierced. Okay. And then in Matthew 24, he goes on to describe that every every stone is going to be thrown down. It's going to be trampled down. And within 40 years of that time, when Jesus said that, Jerusalem was sacked by Titus. But see, he got his people out. He got his people out. See, Because there was a two-year interlude from the attack on Jerusalem because of the uprising that was taking place. And God's people got out because the Roman army kind of let that. And the, and the Christians got out. The Jews, the haughty ones in spirit, haughty and prideful. See, God's fixing to cast down the prideful and the arrogant. Okay? Isaiah chapter 2 says all the haughty are going to be thrown down. Cast down. So, believer, today I ask you, I tell you, search your heart and say, God, search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way in me. And Lord, if there's any haughtiness in me or any pride in me, take it out. Take it out, Lord. See? Because a haughty spirit, what is it? It goes before destruction. Hallelujah. See? Pride and haughtiness go before destruction and a fall. You don't want to fall in this hour. And God told me in 2002, late 2002, that there's a great struggle coming but we will stand for he's able to make us stand see that's what he said to the church through me he spoke it to me but it's for the whole body the church is going to stand we're going to stand in this hour we're going to stand no matter what the devil does the onslaught of the enemy in this earth is against the true believer it's against the body of Christ it's against those who are truly walking the walk of the Lord Jesus Christ a crucified life with humility and long suffering and all the fruit of the Spirit. They're out to kill the true believer. But they're not going to succeed. Hallelujah. Psalm 91 tells us that a thousand are going to fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. It shall not come near us. Hallelujah. It shall not come near us at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but it's not going to come near us. Because the Lord said so in His Word. 
The Lord said in the same psalm that His angel encamps around those who fear Him. You have to be built up in your faith today. You have to begin to proclaim with your mouth these truths continually, continually, continually throughout the day. Proclaim with your mouth what's in your heart. The Lord Jesus Christ, the victorious one. We overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. You begin to proclaim this and proclaim this and proclaim this and you know it to be true. That's why you're proclaiming it, see. Because the devil, he wants us to talk about the New World Order. He wants us to talk about the gun issue. He wants us to talk about football, basketball, baseball. He wants us to talk about sports. He wants us to talk about entertainment. He wants us to talk about all the stuff in the world. But Jesus says, no. Talk about my kingdom, my love, my righteousness, my goodness. See? He's coming back very soon. No one knows the day or the hour. But he said, I'm coming in an hour that you think not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what he said in Matthew 24. So people that are setting dates out there, you're wrong. Your dates are wrong. They're all wrong. Hallelujah. Okay? Know that the Lord is coming. He's coming in His people, in His saints. He's going to begin to break out of us. He's going to begin to break out of us more and more and speak through the mouths of His prophets, the mouths of His children. Even the little babes, He'll speak through their mouths. His truth and His love and His mercy and His grace and His justice and His peace. Hallelujah. Our God is glorious. Our God is good. Moses said, show me your glory. And God said, I'm going to let all my goodness pass before you, Moses. All my goodness. But you can't see me, Moses. You'll be able to see my backside. Hallelujah. You just see my back. Because if you saw me all the way, Moses, who I am in my essence, and no one ever will, Okay, except the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You would just vaporize, okay? None of us will see the Father. None of us will see God in His essence of who He is and Himself. No, none of us will. Ever. For all of eternity. For all of eternity. The Bible says we will see Him, we will know Him, you know, as we are known. But see, we are finite creatures. So He is going to know us fully, and we're going to know Him to that measure to that measure. And we're going to be finding out more and more for all of eternity. His children in the earth are the elite, okay, of humankind. We are the elite. But being the elite, we are like Jesus, see? Jesus was trampled down, see, wasn't he? Wasn't he? See? It pleased the Father to bruise him, to crush him, see? So does it please the Father today? to see his children going through trial after trial after trial? Yes, it does, because see, the Father knows it's perfecting us. It's making us more like the Son. Hallelujah. And we're going through the trial, see? And we're going through the trial. We're going through the flood. He said he's with us through the flood. He said he's with us in the fire, through the fire. Not to stay in the fire forever, but through the fire. Hallelujah. And some of us, he's bringing out the other side. Hallelujah. See? And it's for a time to get prepared to go through another trial, see? Because he, that's how He does it. That's how He does it. He's forming us. He's fashioning us. He's the potter. We are the clay. Our God is able to keep us in this hour. And He is keeping us. And He's giving forth this word, I know, to bring you encouragement. Because some of you are wondering, why are all these things happening to me that are so contrary to everything that's been happening the last 25 years? Everything's been going great for me, Lord. But now, all this stuff is happening to me. Why, Lord? Why? Because God's trying you, my brother, my sister. God's trying you. God's seeing and showing you what's in you. See? Showing you more the reality of Christ within you. You know who your rock is. You know who the rock is. The Lord Jesus Christ. You know what to do. Open your mouth and cry out to God. And watch Him deliver you. You know that. You know the Bible says that cursed is the man that trusts in man and maketh flesh his arm. Jeremiah 17, 5. You know that. And I know it too. But many times I went to man. I went to man. I went to man. Oh, and it hurt so bad. See, But God taught me. He taught me. He's still teaching me. He's still teaching Sharon. He's teaching us together. See, there was an appointed time before the foundation of the world God knew. And there was an appointed time when He brought me right to where my wife was. I saw her. See. 
and God put us together for this time that we are coming up upon, coming into, hallelujah, right now. And it is going to be a time of great trial. But see, in the trial, He is with us. Look at the Bible. Look at the great witness in the Bible. Hallelujah. The three Hebrew uh, young men who were cast into the, the seven times heated fiery furnace, they were cast in there. The flames were so hot, it burned up all the chief men of Nebuchadnezzar. It killed them all. But they were in there, and they didn't have no ropes no more on them. And the Son of Man was walking in there with them. Jesus was in there with them, in the fire. And He will be with us. Hallelujah. It says in Isaiah that there will be a cloudy pillar by day. Hallelujah. And a fire by night upon our dwellings. Hallelujah. And this is how it is. And this is how it's going to be. Hallelujah. We see it today. We know today that God is with us. But the liar, the devil, he always speaks through the false teachers and trying to put doubt upon the sheep about their salvation, about how they're walking, about how they're being discipled by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. See, that's a lying serpent. If you hear people talking about that, about don't read your Bible, you don't need the Bible, and you know who they are, you just you tell them, take a hike, hit the road, Satan. I'm not going to believe your lies any longer. I'm going to be grounded in the Word on the rock like Jesus was. See, Jesus was grounded in the Scripture. Hallelujah. Matthew, I mean Luke 24, those guys walking on the road to Emmaus, Jesus said, what did He do? He came up beside them and then He, he, he expounded to them through all the Scriptures, in all the Scriptures, everything concerning Himself. Hallelujah. See, Jesus was a Bible teacher. Hallelujah. Praise God. And He taught the Bible to those men. He taught the Scripture and the meaning to them. And that's how we get the meaning out of the Word today for us today. By the Holy Spirit within us. Hallelujah. But if you don't read it, you don't get it. See, You don't get those truths if you don't read it. God's saying, study to show yourself approved unto God. Workmen, rightly dividing the Word of truth. When you wake up in the morning, read the Bible. Meditate on verse after verse after verse. You study to show yourself approved. And as you're studying, it's going to lead to prayer. And you begin to worship and praise God. And you worship Him and praise Him and love Him and glorify Him. And as the Holy Spirit drops in your spirit people to pray for you, lift them up before the throne as Jesus does at the Father's right hand, ever living to make intercession for us. Hallelujah. See, being the elite means it's, it's, it's tougher on us. Okay, As God's children. It's going to be tough on God's children. It is. But we're going to be victorious because we are in Christ. We're going to see victory after victory after victory. See? How can that be? It sounds like you're saying something, John, you're contradicting yourself. No, I'm not. See? It was tough on Jesus. He walked a tough walk. Crucified life. Hallelujah. But because He was totally dependent on the Father, because He totally looked to the Father, see, He made it through. He made it through. And He was able to, to just pass right through the crowd. They were going to throw Him over the cliff. He just turned around and walked right through them. Hallelujah. Be strengthened today, believer. Don't give up. Don't give up hope. If you don't have any hope, you, 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 you don't hope. We are believers in Christ. Hallelujah. The risen one. Hallelujah. And we have hope. He's our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Not the rapture. Jesus is our hope. Hallelujah. Jesus is our hope. Hallelujah. Not being right about this prophecy or that prophecy. That's not your hope. Jesus is your hope. Hallelujah. And you know you have Him inside. You have the witness. You have the assurance. Hallelujah. See, we got it today. And He has us. Hallelujah. We have the witness, and He has us. And He possesses us. Hallelujah. And let us let Him possess us, and let us let Him do His work in us, through us, and by us. Hallelujah. And for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God.